Rangers podcast. So you could ask yourself, what can a normal person do about this? Mm. I'm afraid it's the one thing most people don't want to do. Let's get just a little bit involved in politics. Yeah. So a real, this is so important. If I was to ask people to take one thing away from my point of view, just join the political party of your choice. It's never going to be perfect. Mm. It's always going to be something you don't like. But just pick the political party that's closest to your views and get involved mm. because then you can have a vote to prevent bad candidates getting uh, elected. What is the main con uh, uh, excuse for people not to join? Well, where does hate politics want nothing to do with it? I mean, I think that's it. It's just ugly. It's ugly. It's, it's grubby. It's mean-spirited. People don't want anything to do with it. But it doesn't have to be that way, right? But I think nowadays the biggest problem why people don't want to join in because they all say we're too busy. We're yeah, getting on with our lives. We have to do this. We have to do that. Even like just looking into my life, like I want to try to do so many different things. I want to do this and that. And, and like when I have that free time, I maybe would read a little bit of book or something like that and yeah. to think about trying to understand so what's a important. Minimal, so a minimal involvement in politics really isn't much time. It's 20, 25 pounds a year, which I would say large numbers of people can afford, afford to pay mm. to be a Conservative Party member. For that, you end up with a vote in the uh, the process of selecting the next leader. So it's about 120,000 people going to vote to pick the next leader of the Conservative Party and Prime mm -hmm. Minister. That's quite a big deal. And that gives you a lot more power than being in an electorate of tens of millions. So, you know, that's the first thing. £25 a year buys you, because that's what you have to be a member to vote. It's reasonable. So that gets you the opportunity to vote in the leadership contest. Then there's the selection of members of parliament. So I've been an MP for 12 years. I don't know what the average tenure is, but I suppose it's 15 years or so. You don't you know, voting once every 15 years or whatever. And then, of course, council candidates. Now, it's not a lot to ask to go people to go to a selection meeting mm. and hear the candidates out and say, actually, I'm a little bit concerned about your vanity or your competence mm. or your fundamental motivations and just vote for someone else. But th this is, I'm afraid, the big problem we've got. Non-participation yeah. means that the worst can get on top. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy called Hayek wrote in a book called The Road to Serfdom about this, why the words worse get on top. And, um, yeah, the answer to it is for normal, decent, civilised people who don't want all this politically motivated nonsense in their lives to just get involved and stop it by voting against the idiots that uh, otherwise will go forward. How often do you hear then when say they say, like, oh, we voted f uh, for the least uh, bad option? Yeah, you do get that. A lot of people who are in that territory, they will stay at home. So in Wickham, in a typical election, about a third of the people will vote Conservative, about a third of the people will vote for another candidate, and about mm. a third of the people will stay at home. That's typically what mm. happens. But I remember once saying to somebody with decades more political experience than me, I want to drive up per turnout. Yeah, just a moral, sensible thing to do. Let's get people voting. And she turned to me with an old-fashioned look on her face and said, Steve... I don't care if three people turn out so long as two vote for you. Aww. And I thought, hmm, yeah, because in the end, politics... Once you're a politician, politics is about winning. Mm -mm -mm. Well, the why? Because you want to win because you think your ideas are right for society. If mm -hmm. you're even, a, even the best motivated person wants to be in politics because th they believe that their ideas are, are the best for our society. So if you want to serve the public like that you've you've got to win you've got to get elected mm. and you've once you're elected you've got to become a minister and this creates a set of incentives for people that with either even the most angelic candidate are bound to drive them to want to win and then to want to get on in their career because so, suppose a person's got great ideas for for example reducing poverty by taking control of the department for work and pensions and implementing very worthy reforms to deliver universal credit with higher basic amounts of money coming to people, a taper rate improved, all that stuff. All good. There's a good argument so that could really improve people's well-being lifelong, break cycles of worklessness, economic uh, dependency, debt addictions, all the family breakdown, all these things which happen, very often driven by poverty. So there'd be very, imagine there's very, very good high moral reasons for wanting to be in that position. But to actually get to be the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, mm. you've got to become a candidate, You've got to get uh, elected in a seat you can hold for a long time. You've got to work your way up through the ministerial ranks, and that often will mean choking down policies that you don't really like mm. because it's loyalty which gets you on in the Conservative Party. And then eventually, after years, you become the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. And I'm not picking on the current incumbent, Therese Coffey. She's very nice. I'm just making the point that it's a very, very long journey yeah. to, to become a Secretary of State for even the most well-motivated person. So... 
Yeah, insofar as politics has big, big flaws, I would say one of the biggest root causes is non-participation by voters in political parties because that's where you can make the most difference to who you actually get as a candidate. Mm. And it doesn't take a lot of time. You probably, you'd probably need to devote a few hours a year so what would be the easiest way, uh, obviously I'm asking for the easiest way because we want the easiest way in everything yeah. and fastest way in everything. For Let's say for young people, for young teenagers, yeah. um, just start getting, uh, dip their toe a little bit into politics and have more understanding what's going on. What is out there? What kind of, uh, what kind of websites or uh, oh, so TV programs and that kind of stuff? So I link to loads of stuff from my website, stevebaker.info. I probably need to put some more stuff right on the front page. Now I've said this on your podcast. Yeah. But um, uh, uh, YouTube channels like Learn Liberty, which is an amazing, amazing uh, channel. Uh, Prague University is uh, set up on YouTube to appeal to young people. Um, I recommend loads of uh, books, some of which are very slim. So I, I do a book, um, a book club in Parliament for young researchers, oh, nice. pe young people in their 20s and 30s. And w once a month we get together, pizza... Pizza, wine. That's how you learn them, lure them in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pizza, pizza and wine. But they come, they come, actually, do you know what? They come for the ideas. Yeah. So we did a seminar. We did a three seminars on a book called Principles for I Free I dare Society. you to question at the end, why did you came from before here? And anyone can uh, write down anonymous? And how many people are going to say pizza and wine? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I think, they I think they come for the book. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. We pack my office with young people discussing the principles for a free society. So equality, civil society, tolerance, democracy free enterprise it's about a dozen in the book so a book is only about you know i don't know that thick mm -hmm. maybe 50 pages and anyone could sit down and read it in a couple of sittings easily so pe people should inform themselves but an informed electorate is the best defense uh, for a free and prosperous society um you know socialism i've got to say i'm conservative because i believe in freedom socialism is always the attempt to organize society by decree mm -hmm. and it never works it always produces poverty and misery and even mass murder that is the historical experience, and socialists don't like to hear it said, but that's always what happens. They start off with these utopian ideas, but in the end, their utopian ideas can only be brought forward by increasing the use of force in society. And if you increase the use of force in society, you're bound to get a more aggressive, more violent society. And, 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 and that, to me, is one of the big arguments for not being a socialist. It doesn't matter how good your ultimate intents are, how... how um, how utopian you are, if the methods you choose are never going to work, well, do something different. Mm. So I'm, I'm a classical liberal. I believe in freedom. I believe we need some government, but it should be relatively minimal. You know, we were talking earlier about something. We didn't use the word virtue. But talking about how we relate to one another in community. Yeah. Actually, people need to choose to be virtuous. You know, and choosing to be virtuous means being temperate in how we relate to one another, how we listen. It means being courageous and hopeful. It means loving people, actually choosing to be optimistic and hopeful about other people. And so it, actually rediscovering virtue and freedom would be a great way to rebase our society in a way that I think the vast majority of people would approve of. Mm. But how can I pass a law to make people virtuous? I can't. This is one of the great tensions. In a sense, it's the only story in human civilization. But the irony is the best way to get politics out of people's lives is to have a well-informed population who have that view and then they get involved with politics and say to politicians, uh, uh, no, thanks, I don't want that from you. Mm. I want to pick this other guy who's willing to get elected who wants to reduce the role of politics in my life. But I'm afraid that's it's a choice. We, we're stuck with politics, power, legislation, courts. We, these things are going to be there forever and they do a lot mm. of good. But the question is, how do you stop them going too far? I'm afraid the only answer, the only way, we are just stuck in life Mm. that the only way to stop politicians going too far is to participate in democracy. And for those of us who would like less politics in our lives, it's iron ironic. How is it in the UK, let's say, like, if they elect the, the parliament, how long do they have the power? Five years is the limit. Five years. Yeah, right. we've just repealed the Fixed Term Parliament Act, but um, five years is the limit. So one of the biggest things what I noticed in Latvia what was happening, so the, we, ha we would have these parties, right? And we have, like, let's say, five main parties, and they're fighting for the seats in the same, as we call the seats in the parliament. Yeah. It's very similar. And, um, and let's say they come up with all these promises, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. As soon as they get elected... That's all out of window. Yeah, it's hopeless. But so what is the... Because, again, like, let's say yeah. if this is a small small tribe, small village, it's 30 of us, yeah. 
Uh, Steve comes up and says, listen, guys, if uh, you allow me to be in charge, um, I'm going to make sure that kids going to get food, uh, elderly going to get this. Da, yeah, da, da, by da, telling you what to do. Fishermen <laughs> going to do this with this. Yeah. And then li- literally half a year later, you've done none of it. And then opposite. If yeah. we are a little tribe, we're just going to slay you right on the stop or just kick you out of the tribe. You know, yeah. we're going to come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. But when these people, they get this power and they're there, you can't just get rid of them in one year. No. So what is th- that is my biggest problem? Yeah, because so they can lie, looking in your eyes, saying like, "Oh, we're gonna do this, and that's gonna happen," and it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, th- this is one of the biggest problems. People become accomplished liars. I mean, I won't have lying. You've got to have. So I always say, when, when everything we say and we write in my team, it's got to be true, necessary, beneficial, rightly motivated, and with permission. Mm-hmm. Permission is the only thing that's hard. Sometimes you've got to attack somebody, and you don't you don't ask their permission first. But true, necessary, beneficial, rightly motivated. And a lot of politicians don't do that. And I've seen it myself over 12 years. Once somebody lies a little bit, they become better and better at lying and they get mm, themselves in mm, these webs mm. of deceit. You can't trust them. But the best thing to do with such people is remove them from public life, which you can only do illegally by voting. So, yeah, politics is inherently mucky. You know, they say power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. But, yeah, power is corrupting. The worst of people's vanities and ambitions come out and in order to strive after their ambition they'll then say and do things they ought not to do so it is a mucky old business but um as i say we're, we're, we're stuck with it we've got to, got to have some mechanism of controlling power in this mm. world and democracy is the best one but it's a line something like this i see now more clearly than ever before that even our greatest troubles spring from something as admirable as it is dangerous Mm. from our desire to better the lot of our fellows and this is such an important lesson for me as a politician and for for the public as well just because a politician wants to make your life better doesn't mean it's right to put them in power and give them control of the law Mm. it's like the oldest mistake in the book this temptation that they'll fix my life if only i give them more power over me whoa 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 how about fixing your own life? Yeah. How about improving ourselves first and our relationships with other people and not expecting someone else to set up a bureaucracy to tell us how to do it? But when society's really tipped into barbarism, I think it's fair to say it's really industrial-scale barbarism always arises from people being willing to expand the use of power in society. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Bruno's Podcast.